the red rice granary every year our country has to face natural disasters in some form it may be an earthquake in gujarat floods in odisha or a drought in karnataka in a poor country these calamities cause havoc in the course of my work i have found that after such calamities many people like to donate money or materials to relief funds we assume that most donations come from rich people but that is not true on the contrary people from middle class and lower middle class help more rarely do the rich people participate wholeheartedly a few years back i was invited to a reputed company in bangalore to deliver a lecture on corporate social responsibility giving a speech is easy but I was not sure how many people in the audience would really understand the speech and change themselves. After my talk was over, I met many young girls and boys. It was an affluent company and the employees were well off and well dressed. They were all very emotional after the lecture. Madam, we buy so many clothes every month. Can we donate our old clothes to those people who are affected by the earthquake? can you coordinate and send these to them some of them offered other things we have grown up children we would like to give their old toys and some vessels i was very pleased at the reaction it reminded me of the incident in the ramayana where during the construction of the bridge between india and lanka every squirrel helped shri rama by bringing a handful of sand please send your bags to my office I will see that they reach the right persons. Within a week my office was flooded with hundreds of bags. I was proud that my lecture had proven so effective. One Sunday along with my assistants I opened the bags. What we saw left us amazed and shocked. The bags were brimming with all kinds of junk. Piles of high heel slippers, some of them without the pair, torn undergarments unwashed shirts cheap transparent sarees toys which had neither shape nor color unusable bed sheets aluminum vessels and broken cassettes were soon piled in front of us like a mountain there were only a few good shirts sarees and usable materials it was apparent that instead of sending the material to a garbage dump or a kabaddi wala These people had transferred them to my office in the name of donation. The men and women I had met that day were bright, well-traveled, well-off people. If educated people like them behaved like this, what would uneducated people do? But then I was reminded of an incident from my childhood. I was born and brought up in a village called Shiggaon in Karnataka's Haveri district. My grandfather was a retired school teacher and my grandmother Krishtakka never went to school. Both of them hardly traveled and had never stepped out of Karnataka. Yet they were hard working people who did their work wholeheartedly without expecting anything from anybody in their life. Their photographs never appeared in any paper nor did they go up on a stage to receive a prize for the work they did. They lived like flowers with fragrance in the forest, enchanting everyone around them, but hardly noticed by the outside world. In the village, we had paddy fields, and we used to store the paddy in granaries. There were two granaries; one was in the front, and the other at the back of the house. The better quality rice, which was white, was always stored in the front granary, and the inferior quality, which was a little thick. and red was stored in the granary at the back in those days there was no communal divide in the village people from different communities lived together in peace many would come to our house to ask for alms there were muslim fakirs hindu dasahis who roamed the countryside singing devotional songs yellamma jogatis who appeared holding the image of goddess ellamma over their head poor students and invalid people we never had too much cash in the house and the only help my grandfather could give these people was in the form of rice people who receive help do not talk too much 
they would receive the rice smile and raise their right hand to bless us irrespective of their religion the blessing was always may god bless you my grandfather always looked happy after giving them alms i was a little girl then and not too tall since the entrance to the front granary was low it was difficult for grown ups to enter so i would be given a small bucket and sent inside there i used to fill up the bucket with rice and give it to them they would tell me how many measures they wanted in the evening my grandmother used to cook for everybody that time she would send me to the granary at the back of the house where the red rice was stored i would again fill up the bucket with as much as rice she wanted and get it for her to cook our dinner this went on for many years when i was a little older i asked my grandparents a question that had been bothering me for long why should we eat the red rice always at night when it is not so good and give those poor people the better quality rice my grandmother smiled and told me something i will never forget in my life child whenever you want to give something to somebody give the best in you never the second best that is what i have learned from life god is not there in the temple mosque or church he is with the people if you serve them with whatever you have you have served god my grandfather answered my question in a different way our ancestors have taught us in the vedas that one should donate with kind words donate with happiness donate with sincerity donate only to the needy donate without expectation because it is not a gift it is a duty donate with your wife's consent donate to the other people without making your dependents helpless donate without caring for caste creed and religion donate so that the receiver prospers this lesson from my grandparents told to me when i was just a little girl he stayed with me ever since if at all i am helping anyone today it is because of the teachings of those simple souls i did not learn them in any school or college